Okay, as promised, we're looking at the Brisbane Broncos' poor start to the 2019 NRL season. Um, here's all the games they've played. Here's their next five games. There's their points for and against and where they currently sit at the table. These are the things I'm going to be looking at. I, I understand, obviously, we could discuss Darius Boyd as captain, Anthony Seabold coming in a year earlier as coach than originally planned, and Wayne Bennett leaving. Losing Sam Thiday and Corbin Sims, Thiday to retirement, Corbin Sims going to the Dragons, and even Maguire going to the Cowboys as well. They've lost three key forwards. The halves, Nick Ariba's now left for the Warriors, so you know now that that poses further issues. Anthony Milford is he's too unstructured, and there's no structure in the halves position. Yeah, Corey Oates is the only guy who can regularly score points on a regular basis, it seems. So let's have a look at things, shall we? And some of the numbers make really shocking reading. So let's have a look. They they start their campaign against the Storm away, and they lose 22 points to 12. They were well behind at halftime. They gave the Storm a, a head start. But the Storm traditionally start the season first round out the gates like they're already in a grand final. The Storm were always a traditionally well-prepared side. They've only failed to win, I think, twice. Twice on the first round ever in NRL history. It says a lot, really. To lose the Storm away from home is not the end of the world. I will say that. I will stress it's not the end of the world. But to concede 22 points and to be completely hopeless at half-time, at nilled at half-time, that's the problem. They came back in the second half. Corey Oates gets two tries. But they leave it too late to start playing. And this is an ongoing theme throughout this opening eight games of the season. Um, so they lose 22 points to 12. It's not the end of the world, though. There are things they can work on. Anthony Seabold, he, he had a similar start to his time at the Rabbitohs, and look what he did with them last season. I think part of the problem is he came a season early. We could discuss Anthony Seabold and the Wayne Bennett swap to death. Uh, I think Seabold should have had that second season at the Bunnies, and Wayne Bennett should have finished out that last season at uh, this season at the, the Broncos. We may have seen a different start of the season for both sides. Who knows? That's hindsight. They play their first home game against the Cowboys. They win 29 points to 10. It's a good side result against the side that win in the first round, the Cowboys. Good side result. Fierce local rivals. They score 29 points. That's a really good response to losing in round one, is to put in a strong performance like that in round two. And their defence is pretty solid. They only can see 10 points. That's going to change. Uh, there's this lengthy losing streak. But they win that first home game. All's looking well, right? This is where it starts to go wrong. They lose against the Dragons uh, with a Corey Norman drop goal. Uh, a game they could and possibly should have won. Uh, they lose 24 points to 25 at home. And this starts a four-game losing streak. And uh, it's a painful losing streak. But that is a game they should and could have won. Uh, poor game management is another thing that comes up. And Anthony Milford being in the halves. Nick is now gone, but those two were the halfbacks at the time. Game management. Darius Boyd as captain has, has got to have a word with these players and say, just just complete the set, put the ball in touch. Complete the set, put the ball in touch. Get a repeat set if possible. They weren't doing that. And they were allowing the Dragons back in the game. And the Dragons allowed the Broncos back in the game. It was a very sloppy game. Highly entertaining, mine is a neutral, which I was. But they allowed the Dragons back in. When the Dragons were rocking, they didn't turn the screw. There was no game control, no game management. The Dragons get back in it. Then they get allow the Broncos back in. They miss the field goal. The Broncos, you know, miss that field goal. Corey Norman gets the field goal. All hell breaks loose. The Dragons win the game. This then starts the losing streak. So they then have to dust themselves down. That is a highly emotional game they've lost. They put a lot of energy in that game. And Corbin Sims, their ex-player, has a field day with their forward pack. He dominates the young forward pack. He makes a lots of metres really a driving force behind the Dragons. They go into the game against the Roosters. I wish they hadn't. The Roosters uh, put 36 points past them. They only score one try. They lose 36 points to four. They are hammered away from home. Absolutely hammered at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Um, possibly the worst performance I've ever seen the, Roos uh, the Broncos play up to this point. Though there is worse to come. But this really is a schooling. There's a reason why the Roosters won the grand final last year. There's a reason why they're favourites to do the double back-to-back. -back. The Broncos aren't even on the same page. It's not even close. It's not even fair. It's like if that was a boxing match, they would have 
that would have been a, a, a stoppage in like round two, round three. It, they were blown out the water, absolutely annihilated. And it it really sums up where they are at. A young, inexperienced side playing against the, the, the reigning premiership champions. Um, it was like lambs at the slaughter. There was no structure to their play. There was no confidence to their play. No pace. No, no nothing. No game management. Defence was ha- all over the place. There was no defensive organisation. And that comes down to the halfbacks, fullback, the spine. Darius Boyd as captain should be organising the teams and the players around him, giving instructions. He lacked leadership. There was there was they were being dominated in the contact area. They were hammered. They then go and play the Tigers at home, and they lose sixteen points to twenty two, and get another game they should and could have won. And that's at home. And this Tigers side, while they've gone off the rails a little bit in the last couple of weeks, up to this point, this Tigers side can can and will score points uh, if they want to. Um, defensively, the Tigers are a bit suspect. The Broncos didn't score enough points against a suspect defence. They they also, near the end, they got into the lead and then they coughed it away. So game management, again, is a problem. And we look at the halfbacks and the captaincy and the leadership core of that, of that group. Game management's a massive problem. There's not enough people stepping up and saying, keep it calm, let's just get a set of five in, let's get a kick away kick to touch, try and get a repeat set, good kick chase, nothing like that. It's just an aimless kick on the end. The last last play options has been poor. The game management's been poor. And they've allowed teams like the Tigers, who are a bit inconsistent, to, to get a result they really shouldn't. Then they go play away at the Raiders. Now, they actually had the Raiders, and this game seesawed. They were ahead going into the latter half, that stage of the second half, and then the, the Raiders uh, snatched the win. And again, game management. This was a seesawing game where game management would have proved crucial. The Raiders, Aiden Caesar is out, so they're, they're, they're trying a new halves combination. Um, yeah, no, this was a this was a uh, poor game management again. It's, it's coming out. But at the same time, while they've scored 22 points, they've conceded 26 and we'll get to the averages of for and against point scoring uh, later on in the video. That is something you're noticing, is the points they're conceding. 22, 10, 25, 36, 22, 22. They are conceding double-figure points every game up to this point. The only game where they haven't conceded double-figure points was against the Sharks uh, two weeks ago. Now, the Sharks decimated by injury in this game. Um, they beat them 29-6, so they can score points, the Broncos, if they feel like it, if they're confident. The two games they've won, they've scored 29 points. So if they get to that 29-point mark, they can win. If they can get over 28 points, they win. The thing is, that Shark side, I'm not going to read too much into that because the Sharks have gone on, bounced back and beaten the Storm, a side that beat this team 22 points to 12. And a nearly full-strength Storm side as well. Um... I'm not reading too much into that victory over the Sharks because the Sharks had so many key players out injured, and it was a hot. It was just a, a team that was cobbled together because of the injuries. They're missing several key players in key positions. They're missing fullbacks, centres, wingers, forwards, halves. I'm not reading too much into that because of the the, the game before and the game after. That is just a, a one-off game. If they were to play that game again, I don't think they win. The game against the Rabbitohs, if you thought the game against the Roosters was appalling as a Broncos fan, no, no. The way the Rabbitohs shredded them, I think, uh, it was even more one-sided than than the game against the the Roosters. Uh, The Rabbitohs had a field day. That was the best the Rabbitohs have played all season. The Rabbitohs have actually been misfiring at winning games, so they haven't been free-flowing at times. That was the best the Rabbitohs have played this season. And of course, it was the battle of the coach swap. So Anthony Seabold coached the Roosters, uh, co- coaching the Rabbitohs last year, sorry, uh, and and Wayne Bennett being the Broncos coach last year, they swap. Wayne Bennett does not have a good record uh, against the Broncos when he's coached teams against them. Bearing in mind, he's only coached, I think, three or four years away from um, Suncorp Stadium in his entire coaching career since 1988. He hasn't had that many games coached against the Broncos, but he doesn't have a great record against the Broncos 
I, I don't think he cares about that record now. He, his side put 38 points past them. Let that sink in. So they've conceded 36 points against the Roosters and they've conceded 38 points against the Rabbitohs. I think the Rabbitohs and Roosters will be the grand final matchup at this stage, although a lot can happen between now and the end of the season. But they only scored six points. And that's telling. Very telling. Um, there's only one game where they haven't conceded double figures in this entire run this season. Uh, and, you know... It's it's pretty shocking the amount of points they're conceding. And those two games against the Roosters and the Rabbitohs, that that's humbling defeats. Defensively, there are issues. They're getting dominated in the contact area. The forward pack is, is not dominant. And we can mention Sam Thardy retiring and Maguire and Sims leaving. But there's just not enough there. Gillette cannot carry that forward pack. And there's not enough game management from the halves. And I'm looking at Milford because he's so off the cuff. He's so unstructured. They need a structured halfback in there. Nick Arim is gone. Darius Boyd is captain. That's questionable. I mean, if you can shut Corey Oates down, this team struggle. If you can if you can shut Corey Oates down on the wing uh, and, and shut that out ball out to him and put pressure on the, the last play kick or last play, the Broncos look very blunt in attack as well, even though in some games they have scored points, primarily from try scoring by Corey Oates. You keep Corey Oates quiet, the team doesn't do well. Their next five games, they're playing uh, away against the Sea Eagles. That's not going to be easy. The Sea Eagles are on a, a good, healthy win streak. They're, chi- they're going under the radar. They're a very solid side. They're not expansive, but they play very similar to the Storm in a sense where they keep games close, tight and controlled. They control the game. They control the pace of the game if they can. Um, and they're chipping away. They're just chipping away. They're getting the results in. They're not outstanding. They're not blowing teams away, but they're solid defensively. They don't concede a lot of points. Not necessarily score a lot of points, but with this Broncos defence, you know, anything's possible. Then they have to play the Roosters at home. And consider what the Roosters did to them earlier in the season and what the Roosters did this weekend as well and how free-flowing they feel and how confident they are. It's a tall order just, just to be in the game at half-time, I think, is is the objective. Be in the game at half-time, uh, and go from there. But they've got to get past the Seagulls first. So that's going to be a really tough game. Seagulls is not going to be easy either. Then they play the Warriors away. Now the Warriors, the wheels will come off for them as well. Uh, they're another team on four points. But they are above them in the table. They've got a better defence and a better attack. They've they, Their for and against record is for points scored and conceded is better. So that's going to be an interesting game. That's a game they have to target. The Warriors do also have a very shaky defence, uh, and they're also on a losing streak as well. And then they play the Titans. Now, the Titans have now won two games, but they lost the last game, and the Titans are showing signs that they're not all well there either. They've got some injury concerns. They're below them in the table, just on points for and against. That is a local derby match against a local rival. Um, these are the games that they have a chance of winning on form. But We've seen the NRL. Any team can beat anyone. You know, any team can beat anyone. But the way it's going, the Sea Eagles and the Roosters are on, are on form. They're on a, a lengthy win streaks. The Warriors and Titans. The Titans, if they win the next couple of games, the Titans could be a tougher opposition because they won two in a row. They lose a the game. I don't put too much into that. There was an injury in the game that disrupted the, the organisation somewhat. I, I'm not putting too much into that defeat. And this is like four weeks down the line. A lot can happen. But as it currently stands, the Seagulls and Roosters, they really are on form. Warriors and Titans, easier games, you would think, looking at the form sheet. But that's on paper. That's not on the ground. We don't know what the weather's going to do. We don't know if there's any more injuries in training or, or in the games preceding the Warriors and the Titans. And the Titans could get back to winning ways as soon as this weekend. And that could happen. Uh, the Warriors, they have an attack there, but it's the defence that's the real issue. They could also get back to winning ways as soon as this weekend. Um, the form book would say otherwise, but it's, it, there is a chance that could happen. And they finish this the next five games playing against the high-flying, high-scoring Eels. And we know what the Eels can do at home at Bankwest. They, they've scored a lot of points already in two games. They've scored over 80 points in two games at home at their new stadium. Three out of those next five games are a very tall order with how they're playing right now and with the defence that they currently have. So let's have a look at where they stand in the table. They're currently 13th. 
They've got four points. They've only got the two wins. Only the Titans, who they play in the next five games, Panthers and Bulldogs, are behind them in the table. They're yet to play the Panthers and the Bulldogs. That's going to be interesting when they play teams around them in the table. That's going to be fun to look at. They've beaten the Cowboys. That's the team around them in the table. That's it. Every other team they've played is above them in the table, as it currently stands. Uh, the Tigers are probably the closest ones to them in the table as it currently stands, and they lost the Tigers as well. So the only team they've beaten that's around them is the Cowboys, and that was very early on when it, there's there's no separation. You can't tell who's going to be good and bad after the first couple of rounds. But they have a game against the Titans coming up at home. That's going to be crucial. But they've got three away games in there, and they're away form. Let's have a look at it. They've lost away against the Storm. They've lost away against the Roosters. They've lost away against the Raiders. They've not won. And they've lost away against the Rabbitohs. They've lost all their games away so far. They've got three games away. Their away form is killing them. They've won their two games at home that they've won, and they have two home games here, but one of them is against the Roosters. Finally, let's finish with this. I've mentioned game management and defence. They've scored 142 points. And they've conceded 185. So their defence is part of the problem. And you would think, okay, you divide that by eight. Let's see what the average is. They're averaging 17.75 points per game. And they are averaging conceding 23.125. So they, they concede over 23 points a game. They score less than 18 points a game. Part of those averages are distorted by the defeats of the Rabbitohs and the Roosters. But even so, only one game, they've kept the opposition to single figures. Only two games have they kept the opposition below 10 points. Every other game, the opposition has scored 22 points or more against them. So, defensively, they are not good enough. And 22 points a game or more is roughly the average they're conceding. So they are having problems keeping opposition out. They're also not scoring enough. And there are two games where they are also kept to single figures. and that is a massive problem. They are not scoring enough. And the games where they do score, they've they've only, uh, the only times they win is when they score 29 points. If they do not score 29 points or more, they lose. So there is part of the problem. They're not scoring enough, and defensively they are conceding too many points. That comes down to game management. That comes down to the players on the field and the forward battle, which they are losing. Now, they have a chance against the Warriors and the Titans as things currently stand. But as I say, so much can change between now and the game when they time the time they play the Eels in five weeks' time. The Sea Eagles is up next. That's a tough game. And then they follow that up with the high-flying Roosters who are just looking unstoppable right now. And with the way the Roosters dispatched them four weeks ago, five weeks ago, it's a tall order. But there we go. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching. This is a look at how the Brisbane Broncos have had a poor start to the 2019 season. I will have some more videos for you soon. I'll be looking at the Panthers next, and that's going to be fun to look at because they are also in a similar position in the table, and they have some quality players in their lineup. That's going to be fun to look at, and I'll have that video coming for you later in the week. Thank you very much for watching this NRL video. There's obviously other videos to come, more news to post on a variety of sports, but goodbye for now.